Warzone Season 6 is now out, so we're going to be looking at the best settings now for Season 6. So we're going to get right into it. So we want to start off with the Windows settings. So the first thing I want you guys to do is go over to your Windows and just check for updates because this is the main thing with your Windows is if it's not updated, you're going to have lacking performance. So come down here and just type in update, check for updates. Mine obviously isn't, so I'm going to go ahead and hit install now, let it roll, and then it'll restart the computer and then we'll go back from there. The next thing I want you guys to do, just go anywhere on your desktop, right? Right click and then you're going to see AMD Radeon software or you're going to see NVIDIA control panel. Whichever one you're at, just click on it and then go over here and try to find wherever the update is. So make sure that this is updated as well. So check for updates, make sure that it's updated. If you're not completely updated, go ahead and hit download and get that started. Now, a few more things is you wanna hit game mode. So game mode for the most part was, should be on. It should improve your performance by a half percent, maybe at the most. From at least my testing, you know, you're getting one to two FPS from this. But test this for yourself. If you turn this on and your frames go down, that sometimes does happen with NVIDIA and AMD cards but for the most part it's usually on amd cards where this is actually going to negatively affect your gameplay but most computers this is going to benefit you now come over here hit graphic settings and then find war zone so you have to hit browse here and then you have to find your war zone game so mine's right here under games modern warfare since it's usually under the same thing it's it launches under the same thing we just hit this application i already have this one added but we're going to go here you hit options and then you hit high performance mode this is going to prioritize it over any other application that's running so that's that's all I do for the Windows settings. I know there's a lot more things you could do. You could go into the config files. You could do a lot of different things. But now we're going to hop over to the real settings. That's really going to change your FPS the most, which is the in-game settings for season six. All right, guys, as per usual, we're not going to be going over any of these settings because this is all just your personal preference. The only thing I can recommend for you is to turn off mouse smoothing. Other than that, though, everything else is just preference. But as for the real settings, OK, field of view, this is another preference one, but you could go from 60 all the way to 120. Now, I'm going to tell you 120 is very fisheye, but a lot of people like to run it. A bunch of war zone people like to run it. Another popular one is 103, and that's mainly for controller players with the 103, but 120 for uh, keyboard and mouse players that's usually what they're rocking with brightness i like this usually at 55 you're going to want to have the non-visible be slightly visible so whatever that is for you just have it be slightly visible and that's usually the best for shadows and stuff it might not look the best but if you want the best for shadows reducing missing people that are just sitting in a corner then maybe around 60 60 works for me that's when i could barely see the mw logo on the not visible area all right other than that though there's not much um you have a colorblind settings here if you are colorblind um they don't really help you for anything it's not like it's going to help you be able to see through the smoke so i don't recommend turning this on for anyone except if you are truly colorblind everything else though is completely completely up to you. Now, something you might want to turn on is your FPS counter, server latency, packet loss. That's all under general here, but we're going to shoot over to the graphics settings and we want to start off with putting our display mode on full screen. We want to set full screen at all times. It might be easier to alt tab when it's not on full screen, but for frames per second, you want this on full screen. Screen refresh rate is the next thing. Monitor, that's obvious the one that you want to use adapter that's your graphics card you put your refresh rate as high as it could possibly go i have a 280 hertz monitor so that's as high as mine can go yours might be different might be the same but just always have that maxed out now render resolution you want this at 1920 by 1080 the only time you ever want this changed is if you are nvidia dlss that's where that's only for nvidia users that's a different setting down here but for nvidia users it will downscale your render resolution you could get up to like 50 percent more fps with dlss so if you have dlss i would give it a try you could get huge fps gains so yeah i would definitely recommend trying that at least aspect ratio just have this at automatic it should just be 16 9 for most of you now v-sync something that is kind of nice but it is only ever ever recommended to be used if you are not getting your maximum frames per second with your monitor so if you have like a 280 hertz monitor and you're getting like 60 fps then maybe v-sync's okay for you but latency is involved anytime you add in v-sync just keep that in mind if you're a competitive player i would just not even touch this setting it's just not worth it frame rate limit this will limit your frame rate in game you don't really want to do that hit that on unlimited and just keep it there all right now for the setting setting so streaming quality the difference between normal and low is negligible in streaming quality so low they look the same they perform the same there's no fps loss i just keep it at low just for vram usage because that is what it's going to be using here texture resolution there's a big difference here between low 
and everything else. Okay, very low. It looks terrible. And then low, medium, normal, and high, they all look very similar, but your VRAM usage goes crazy crazy. So I would recommend normal or low, depending on whatever you use, but very low just looks very bad. So I would keep it at low minimum normal for any higher end PCs. I wouldn't touch high or anything above that because it's just the difference there is just not really worth it with how much VRAM it's going to use. So low or normal. So as for your anastrophic filtering, so this is one that does not really affect your FPS, doesn't really affect much. So we actually like to put this one at high. You're going to notice this does not affect your FPS. So it amazes me when people put this at low when it looks so much better at high. This is all about clarity in this sense. And the same thing goes for particle quality. This is one that does not affect your FPS. In some cases, it actually negatively affects your FPS to have it at low from my testing and FPS benchmarking. Low actually does not really help. So clarity wise, just keep this at high. FPS wise, keep it at high. Bullet impacts and sprays. So you're going to be able to see bullet impacts if you have this enabled. Your FPS is really, it's really negligible at this point. Like you're talking zero to 1% change. However, it just does not do enough to make me want to put this at enabled because all you are changing is the texture of bullet holes, which can only be seen at a super close range. So I just keep that disabled. Tessellation, this one also stays disabled. This setting's pretty much irrelevant. Your FPS isn't really going to change, but tessellation is disabled because the difference in visual quality is pretty much nothing and you could lose a few frames. So we just keep this at disabled. On-demand texture filtering is at disabled and then we're back down to the shadows. Now, these are pretty interesting shadow map resolution. Now you can see there's not much difference, but what you will see, and you're gonna have to test this with your own hardware, is sometimes you actually gain FPS whenever you go up to high. If your VRAM is able to handle it, the FPS will go up. Extra, however, always negatively affects you. Everything else, though, is about the same. Now, for me, I actually have tested this a lot, and high and normal get better FPS than low for me, which is definitely interesting, and it might have just been faulty testing. But with that being said, the maximum you're going to gain or lose here is like 2%. So I just keep it at high. And now onto spot shadows and sun shadows. So if your VRAM and hardware allows for this, keep this on. So when you have these enabled, it's actually going to store data and it will render the future frames faster. So you will have a faster frame rate. When they're disabled, it actually will negatively affect you. So keeping this at enabled basically leaves it at a net zero which is exactly what we want. We don't want to lose frames by having this disabled. But if you do have a lack of VRAM in your graphics card, you might not be able to handle having this at enabled. Particle lighting, we want this at low. If you have direct X-ray tracing available, have it at disabled. Ambient occlusion, you want this at disabled as well. This is just not worth it. You have static, dynamic, both. Those are your options. But the thing here is that pretty much everything is static anyways, so you might as well just have this at disabled. Now this one's up to 3% loss on the FPS. So this is why I keep this one at disabled. It's just not worth it for me. Screen space reflection, have this at disabled. This is only going to really, the main thing that this is going to affect is reflections. This could be people reflections off of uh, water, for example, or anything like that. That's what this is going to affect a lot, but disabled versus high, it's only just FPS at that point. There's no real visual difference. It just darkens and details the shadow a little little bit more, the reflection a little bit more. So with filmic strength, you're actually going to want this at one for most people because most people will want anti-aliasing at disabled. This is going to serve you the best, this combination right here. There will be no noise issues. Now, if you are running a higher anti-aliasing, you might want to look at turning this to zero. So it's depth of field. The only difference between depth of field on versus off is that the scope gets disabled here. The FPS doesn't really change, but the scope does blur out right here. And that's kind of how some people like it. Some people like that there is no blur. It all depends on what you want, but disabled is the general way that everyone likes to have it. World motion blur and weapon motion blur, we turn these off because we don't want motion blur. There's nothing good about motion blur, so just keep that off. Film grain, zero, dynamic resolution, off and last but not least this one doesn't matter because we have it disabled now as for your audio mix i've noticed for footsteps boost low works really well but boost low boost high or boost is usually the way to go but this is going to entirely depend on what headphones you have if you're using a speaker from like a tv it might be different it all depends but for me just standard headphones over ear headphones boost low works really well 
everything else is just up to you all preference all depends on how loud you want your game and that right there is all of the graphic settings that we are going to be rocking with for season six of warzone I appreciate you for making it through the video. I hope you have a great day. Let me know what game you guys want to see next. We will see you in the next video.